Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about Power Apps, Mixed Reality Components, General Availability. Now, if you cannot tell from the huge smile on my face, I, for one, am very excited that this feature went GA. I've been working with this for over a year now, and it honestly caught me a little off guard that it came out GA, but hey, it's out, and I'm happy. So in the next few minutes, we'll actually take a look at some of the new features that came out along with the GA, and I'll also demo it for you. But first, here's my intro video. So there's a few things I'd like to first bring to your attention. One is always the fun thing that it was originally announced a year ago on April 1st, which is April Fool's Day. And then now on April the 5th, it has become GA. So it's been a really good, interesting and exciting one year, but it's completely out and it's general available. Now, I also want to notice some new things and that's what got me excited to record this video for you. So the first thing was, there's something called as free form measurement and I'll demo that to you, but in essence, I'm not bound by just a square or a circle or a rectangle to actually get those areas and volumes. It'll do a free form measurement for me as well. But then I also, now the area and the volume, I don't have to calculate that anymore. It automatically goes ahead and does the calculation and I'll measure that and show you, demo that as well. But there were two other very interesting things and that's the bounding width and the bounding depth. Now, any of you who've already worked with images specifically portraying images from a coding standpoint or even 3D images over there, you are quite familiar with the concept of bounding the images based on their width, depth, some of them bounded based on their X, Y, and Z. Um, the whole concept in for power out specifically is explained like this. The bounding measurement, take for example, you've got a 3D rec uh, rectangle over here. Okay, so that's a 3D rectangle. As far as the width goes, this is gonna be the bounding width. So wherever you place this 3D rectangle, if you look at it as a square, all right, then in that square, the bottom is going to be the bounding width. And then the next thing is going to be the bounding depth. So this is basically how the whole concept of bounding measurement works. And it's very important, again, from a 3D perspective, specifically from the measurement standpoints, because this is how you get those accurate, you know, areas and volumes and things like that. All right, so now that I've explained to you and given you a good synopsis of the whole thing, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So for those of you who've seen my previous videos on the Power Apps Mixed Reality, this looks very familiar to you, but there are these new changes now that I've come through. So let's go and take a look at the area. Now in the area, again, the control or the component looks the exact same, but there's some new things that have shown up. So you see on the measurement type on the right, there is now that area and there is the volume and there's that free form. So these were the new things that showed up over there. There's no length anymore, right? There's the, these three. And the process to get the data is the exact same. So that hasn't changed. I go ahead and click on it, do the measurements, and when I come back, I have to dump that into a gallery and then display that data in the gallery. So over here, it's again the same thing, the control name for that component, which is the measurement area in mixed reality. Then you gotta use the measurements function, and then in the measurements function, you gotta tell exactly what it is. And in my case, it is going to be the area, and there's also the bounding depth, height, and in the bottom, there's the volume. But for the sake of this one, I go ahead and get the area, and then once I select the area, over here, it's just a very simple thing, which is the text which I've added, and then this item area. And that area is what gets me excited because I don't have to calculate that anymore. It's automatically right over there. So now that you've understood this one, the volume is the exact same. I go and click on it, go to the measurements, and the measurements have gone and defined what are my units. I went and selected that as inches, and then I go ahead and dump that entire data into a collection, which in this case is just a gallery, and then I view the volume over here. Finally, for the freeform screen, what I've done is I've gone ahead and shown you both the area and the volume together, and that's how I'm doing the freeform. And for the boundary, I'll have, I've created a very simple screen that I'm, it's the same one as the area, but I've also added the boundary, uh, the bounding width and the bounding um, depth over here to kind of explain that to you in, a, in the demo that I'm gonna show over here. But this is basically how the app works. Again, the app coding from the back end to build the, design, uh, the canvas is the exact same. Nothing different has changed. What has changed is that now you don't have to calculate it. You actually have the area formula and you actually have the volume formula and then the bounding width and the depth. So now that you've seen it, let me now go ahead and demonstrate that to you. So here's my mobile app. I use it in my iPhone. And as you can see, this is the Power Apps. One of the things I did was when I was going ahead and playing with this, I went ahead and uh, made sure that my Power Apps mobile app was updated. And I also went ahead and rebooted my phone because it hasn't been rebooted for a while. And I just want to make sure that when I'm 
testing the new mixed reality feature of it that all the device and everything has been rebooted for my first time testing. So now I go and open up the app and then right there is the mixed reality GA features. That's the one that I just showed you back in the studio uh, when we showed the design of it. So I'm gonna click on it. And again, it actually said that there was something new, which is great. So I'm gonna go and tap on it. It kicks me out of it, open back the app again, and we are back in. So let's do the area first. So I click on the area and now I'm gonna do a measurement. So when you first open it, it says point at a device and move it slowly to the left and slowly to the right. And the moment you do that, it has mapped the place really nicely. And you have to only do this once, but it has mapped it. And now let me go ahead and do the measurements. So I start from the top, work my way down, to the right, to the top, and it has completed it. And I can go ahead and even take a picture of it, click on submit, submit all. And it went ahead and calculated the area by itself. And you saw that the area is actually pretty good. Um, I, I know I wasn't very accurate in my measurements, but that's because of my human flaw over there. But the area literally gave you the same numbers that I measured. And again, no calculation required on my side. That is automatically out of the box. But let's not stop here. Let's go to the volume. So I'm going to come back over here. And we are in. Click on the measure. Opens up. Point device at a surface and move it slowly to the left. Slowly to the right came back. Now, let me go ahead and do the same type of measurements. Go up. Got it. I can even take a picture of it. Submit. Submit. And it automatically went down and calculated the volume. Now, for those of you who've been keeping track of the numbers, again, you notice that the volume is pretty accurate right based to the measurements that you did. So it's up to you as how you're doing the measurements. All right, so let's keep continuing. And now let's go ahead and test with the free form. So for the free form, I'm gonna get a little creative and I'll actually try to come up with a different design and we'll see how it measures. So I'll click on the measure and we are here and point the device to the left, slowly to the right. And it went ahead and cut me the measuring over here. So let me now do some interesting design. So I'm gonna tap, come back over there there. I'm going to come up with a nice star shaped design. Let's see what I can come up with. I'm trying to make the volume calculation a little bit more complicated because a square or a circle is so much more easier. But this, this makes it very complicated. So I'm going to take a picture of it, submit it. And now you've got the area and the volume of that complicated picture as well. So that's the whole concept of free form that you're not bound by just a simple square or a rectangle or a you know circle. It, it, it takes these type of complicated features as well or designs and gives you the area and the volume of that. All right, so let me go ahead and now do the final one, which is the bounding. And remember about the concept I just showed you on the presentation, the bounding width and the bounding depth. Those are the two things we're gonna do. So I click on the bounding and this looks like the exact same Microsoft, uh, I mean the uh, measure of the area that we did. But in this case, I'm going to use that same rectangular box, but I'm going to now do a triangle type of measurement to prove that point of depth and width. So we're going to come back in over here and we're going to say, okay, point surface at the surface and move it slowly to the left and right. And, and I was wrong before. Um, it does do it again and again, not just one time. So I click on that now and I'm going to start the measuring. And this time we are going to measure it as a triangle. And I'm gonna hit submit, submit. And this is it, see, it calculated the area, but it also calculated the, the width. And the width was very similar to actual width of the um, triangle over there, because we've seen that, I mean, of the rectangle before, because we've seen that, but the depth was a little bit more. And again, that's based on the calculation and the depth over here of the triangle was actually just the width of the box we did over there. So I kinda of wanna intentionally prove that to you of how this whole concept of bounding measurement works and therefore we drew a triangle on that box. So now you see that, oh, okay, so the width is basically the same width at the bottom over there, just like the diagram I showed before, but then the depth is the depth of the triangle and that really helps as far as the whole measurements goes, which in this case is also for the 3D measurements. So we covered a whole lot. Thanks for sticking around and watching the entire video. And as a quick recap, the mixed reality component is now generally available. And it has a lot more other features over there. So no longer do you have to come up with your own formulas for area and volume, it does it automatically. And it also has these additional features for the bounding of the depth 
and of the width, which are important properties that you will need to get more and more measurements that you will come up ideas for. So hopefully this was helpful. Please go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel because it definitely helps me, helps you. And as always, keep power apping.